Okay, so let's recall in a previous video we defined the notion of a group. So it is a set together with a binary operation G and star where we have an identity. So there's a special element E such that G star E equals E star G um, equals G for all G and G. So in other words, uh, it does not change the element that it's acting on. And then everything has an inverse, so G times G star is the identity, and then we have an associativity with the operation. So in this video, I wanna look at a special class of groups known as dihedral groups, and those are rigid motions of n-gons, and they're denoted by dn. So this is the group of all rigid motions of a regular and gone. So let's look at the simplest example first. We'll look at n equals three. In other words, the rigid motions of an equilateral triangle. So let's draw an equilateral triangle here to get an idea of what's going on. Great, now let's label the vertices. So maybe we'll have one, two, and three, like that. And now notice what can we do to this triangle so that it remains unchanged. In other words, you want to suppose that you could pull this triangle out of the chalkboard, do something to it, put it back on the chalkboard, and you wouldn't notice a difference. So you could obviously do nothing, and we'll call that E to be the identity, just like in line with our notation over here. So this would be do nothing. Great, so that would be one thing that you could do. You could rotate this thing counterclockwise or clockwise. Ro rotating it clockwise by 120 degrees is the same thing as clockwise, counterclockwise by 240. So we could really just get away with saying that R is rotation. So let's use counterclockwise by 120 degrees. But notice, if we do R squared, that's going to be rotation counterclockwise by 240 degrees, which is the same thing as clockwise by 120 degrees. So what that tells us immediately is that if we do R times R squared, we get R cubed, which is, in other words, rotation by 360 degrees, which is the identity. So that means there are only three rotations that we can do to this triangle that leave it unchanged. There is nothing, in other words, a zero degree rotation, there's a 120 degree rotation, and a 240 degree rotation. So let's box those off. Those are all of our possible rotations. Now we also have some reflections here. So we have a reflection that goes through this uh, vertex one, like that. So maybe we could call that S1. So this is reflection through vertex one. And then we could similarly have uh, reflections through vertex two and three. So let's see. So let's call S2 a reflection through vertex two, and then finally we'll call S sub three, so those should obviously intersect in one point, so just don't pay attention to my bad drawing. Um, S three is going to be some sort of reflection through vertex three, and those are all of the possibilities. So we have six total rigid motions, sometimes called symmetries of the equilateral triangle. So now what I want to do, I'll clean up the board and we'll look at how S1, S2, and S3 are related to the rotation. But before I do that, maybe let's notice that if you reflect twice in a row, so S1 reflected with S1 again, you get back to the identity. Because notice what S1 does is it fixes vertex one and it swaps vertex two and three that if you do that again, you swap them one more time and end up back doing nothing at all. So we can denote that by SI star SI 
equals the identity. And that's for i equals 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at how uh, all of these work together. Okay, so good. I put the board together in a way so that we can get a real feel for how these rigid motions combine with each other. So uh, the first thing I want to point out is I put my triangle up here. I made it a little bit smaller so I had room. I've got vertex one here, two here, and three here. And then I've made what will become a multiplication table for all my rigid motions. So I have the identity first, then a rotation by 120, 240, and then all of my reflections. So this is going um, by the column and then also by the row. Now the first thing I want to notice is that this identity, this is nothing to the triangle. So if we combine that with any other rigid motion, nothing changes at all. So that allows us to fill in this first row and this first column of this multiplication table easily. So we'll do that really quick. So notice nothing changes there. And then same thing down here, R, um, R squared, S1, S2, and S3. Now we get to combining things. So let's combine all of the rotations together first. Now notice if we combine 120 degree rotation with itself, which is what we would get right here, this would be like R times R. So if you do one 120 degree rotation followed by another, well you're obviously going to get a 240 degree rotation which is R squared. So we can enter that in just right away. Now next, if we combine a 120 degree rotation with a 240 degree rotation, we're going to get a 360 degree rotation, which is the same thing as doing nothing, so that means I can put the identity right here. And then likewise, I can put the identity right here for the same reason. Okay, we, so we've got one more rotation to combine, and that is R squared with itself. So notice that's going to give us r to the fourth power, which is a 480 degree rotation. But since 360 degrees is the same thing as doing nothing, that's the same thing as a 120 degree rotation because we've got 480 minus 360 is 120. So that's the same thing as r. So good, we've got our multiplication for uh, our rotations all set. Now let's look at the, uh, all the reflections that we know. So we know if we do a reflection with itself, we get back to the identity. So in other words, if we reflect about S, sorry, about the vert, if we reflect about the axis going through vertex one and then do that again, we'll get back to the identity. So that'll give us an identity here, here, and here. Likewise for the axis through vertex two and vertex three. And now we have ones that we really need to work on. So let's look at this part first. So uh, here, I'll just put a star in, <coughs> So I'll just put a little star in here to point out that this is what we're working on at this moment. So let's see, we want to do R and then S1. Now what we're really doing is having R, S1 act on our triangle, right? So you really want to think about these like functions. So the triangle is passing through S1 first and then through R second. So that means S1 is going to act first to give us a triangle and then R is going to act second to give us a triangle. So now S1, it acts, so it's going to fix this vertex and then it's going to swap these two. Great. And now we're going to rotate this whole thing 120 degrees counterclockwise. So that'll be one, three, and then two. Great. Now we look at this and we see what happens from the very beginning to the very end. And notice that vertex three is fixed and vertex one and two are swapped. So that means this is the same thing as S3. Great. So that means we've figured out this, R times S1, that's the same thing as S3 acting on the triangle. Okay, good. And now we can move on uh, to the next. So let's do maybe this one right here. So that means we need to do R followed by S2 acting on the triangle. Okay, so I'm going to erase this real quick and then we'll get to it. Okay, so now I've got it. We're doing S2. The triangle is passing through it first and then R second, so that means we're going to do it this way. So S2, that fixes vertex 2, 
and swaps vertex one and three so we get something like that. Great, now we're gonna do a rotation. So that's gonna give us one, three, two, like that. Great, but now if you look at the very beginning and the very end, vertex one has been fixed and then vertex two and three have been switched. So that's the same thing as uh, S1, this first reflection. So this is S1 on the triangle. Great. And now we can do the same kind of thing and we'll get that this is S2 acting on the triangle. So I'll leave that for you guys to um, check out, but that's not too hard. Now let's look at what happens in the other order. So in other words, next we want to look at what's going on um, maybe right here, which would be, um, let's see, S1R. So S1R on the triangle. And that means that we're gonna act with R, the rotation first, and S1 second. So let's uh, erase what we need to erase and then look at that calculation. Okay, so now we gotta do R first because it passes through this like a function from the right to the left. So first our rotation, that's gonna give us one, two, three. And then our reflection about the axis, which goes through the first vertex, but through this first vertex here, which is transposed over here. So that means we have three, two, one. Good. But now look at the very beginning and the very end, and notice that's the same thing as a reflection about S2. So we can put an S2 right here. Okay, great. So now I'll say that this is the same thing as S2 two acting on the triangle. Great. So now uh, let's maybe do R and then S2. So in other words, S2R, so that will go right here. So S2R on the triangle. Okay, so I'll erase this and then we'll do the calculation. Okay, so we've got it R and then S2. So let's see, if we do R first, that's gonna give us one, uh, two, three. And then if we do S2 second, so that's gonna be reflection about this axis, transposed over here, that's gonna give us two, three, one. Great. Now if we look from the very beginning to the very end, notice that vertex three is fixed and then one and two have been switched. So this is uh, S3 down here. And so now it follows by a similar calculation that if we do this one right here, this is going to be S1. So that's not too hard to see. So now let's look at what we get when we combine two reflections with each other. So maybe let's do S1 combined with S2. So let's see, maybe this one right here. Um, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll do that. Okay, so we're looking at S1 combined with S2 on the triangle. So that means the triangle is passing through S2 first and S1 second. So let's see, first we're going to reflect about this axis. So that's going to give us 3, 1, and 2. And then next we're going to reflect about that axis transposed over. That's going to give us 3, 1, and 2. Great. But now notice that's exactly what we would have gotten by just doing a rotation um, by 120 degrees. So this is the same thing as the rotation acting on the triangle. So we get this rotation right here. Okay, great. So now from here, uh, I'll fill in the rest, uh, but the calculations are quite similar. So you guys should check them um, as needed. Okay, so now we've got uh, something that has been fully filled in and this represents a multiplication table for all of the rigid motions of a triangle. Okay, so we'll pick this up in the next video where we look at the rigid motions of an n-gon.